innervation of the head and neck. There are the 12 pairs of the cranial nerves. We have discussed already. We will go through individually the nerves. They, these nerves are named in Roman letters individually from above downwards. So the first, second, third, so these are the Roman words which are giving to the cranial nerves. So the 12 pairs, first pair, second pair, third pair, similarly up to the 12 pair. Functionally, some are mixed, some are purely motor, are purely sensory, and some carries the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers, which are secretomotor to the glands, like the salivary, lacrimal, or they can be the motor to some smooth muscles within the eyeball, that are the ciliary muscles and the intrinsic muscles of the eye. So these are the three sets of the nerves which are belonging to the cranial nerves. Some are the mixed, that is the sensory and motor component like the trigeminal. Some are purely motor like the hypoglossal and some are purely sensory like the vestibulocochlear and some carries the preganglionic or postganglionic parasympathetic fibers like the vagus nerve. So these are the examples of the cranial nerves which are responsible for again supplying the structures, the skin, the organs and the muscles of the certain viscerals in the head and neck. Branches of oculomotor, trochlear, oculomotor is the third, trochlear is the fourth, trigeminal the fifth, abducens sixth, facial seven, glossopharyngeal ninth, vagus tenth, accessory eleventh, and hypoglossal nerve twelfth. Supply the muscle groups within eyeball. Now the third, fourth, and the sixth, that is the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens. They supply the muscles of the eye. Those are the extrinsic muscles. Whereas the oculomotor is also involved in the intrinsic muscles of the eye, which carries certain postganglionic and preganglionic sympathetic fibers. Now, again, if we see the face, then the face is supplied by the trigeminal. We have discussed the sensory and the muscles of the <coughs> mastication, they are supplied by the motor deviant. Now the facial, this is motor to the muscles of the face. The loss of pharyngeal, that is also going to supply the sensory secretomotor as well as the muscles of the pharynx and also tongue and also the glands of the tongue and the taste buds of the tongue. The vagus, it is the vast nerve which goes long way from the neck into the thorax and also into the abdomen. So this supplies the most of the glands and the GIT we will discuss later on. Or we have discussed in the GIT, we have done the elementary system. Accessory nerve, it is the motor nerve, it supplies the muscles of the neck. Hypoglossal supplies to the muscles of the tongue and so this is how we are going. The vagus supplies the larynx also and the pharynx also. So these are the supplies of these nerves. So the branches of the oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abscissant, facial, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and the hypoglossal, they supply the muscle groups which are within the eyeball, face, pharynx, larynx, and the tongue. So the purpose of this discussion is that we should know overall what is the supply of the head and neck. So the branches of the trigeminal, glossopharyngeal, and the vagus nerve transmit the general sensory information from the skin. So the trigeminal carries the by the cutaneous branches the general sensory information from the skin of the face, a part of the skull, epithelium, lining of the oral cavity, as well as the nasal cavity, the paranasal sinuses, because these cavities are supplied, the mucous membrane or the epithelium is supplied by the branches of the corresponding branches of trigeminal nerve. So the 
sensory information is also carried along the branches of the trigeminal. So the middle ear, pharynx, larynx, and the dorsal surface of the tongue, they contain certain sensory in informations, and these sensory informations, they are traveled by the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve. So branches of the trigeminal nerve also innervate the temporomandibular joint by its motor branches. So the olfactory, optic, trigeminal, facial, vestibulocochlear, and the vagus nerve also transmit the special sensations of the olfaction, vision, hearing, balance, and the taste. So you can see that the cranial nerves, they have got the multiple components in them to carry the different sensations or to carry the motor fibers or to move the muscles. Olfactory nerve is the only sensory cranial nerve. Now, this is a very important topic. So we will discuss in a few minutes. Olfactory nerve is the only sensory cranial nerve that projects directly to the cerebral cortex, whereas all the other nerves go to the thalamus. So the olfactory nerve is the only sensory cranial nerve that project directly to the cerebral cortex rather than indirectly via the thalamus. So the optic nerve terminates in the thalamus directly and then is registered to the cerebral cortex. And then the other remaining 10 nerves or 10 pairs of the nerves of the cranial nerves are attached to the brain stem. Their component fibers arise from or terminate in the named cranial nerve nuclei and then they ascend upwards to the thalamus and then they are registered to the sensory cortex. So the cranial nerves pass through the named foramina in the skull often with named vessels except one that is the vagus all are confined to the head and neck whereas the vagus is the largest nerve of the cranial nerves and it has got the territory out of the head and neck it goes into the neck it goes into the thorax and it goes into the abdomen so from the neck it goes along with the esophagus on each side, the right vagus and the left vagus on each side. And along with the esophagus, it enters into the abdominal cavity through the diaphragm. So the vagus is the largest nerve of the cranial nerves, which goes out of the territory of the head and neck. So this is the difference of the certain cranial nerve that they carry the sensation they carry the nerve fibers for the destination of the different destinations. Now, certain reflexes which belong to the head and neck, these reflexes lie in the head and neck. So, number of reflexes in the head and neck mediated by the sensory and the motor branches of certain cranial nerves are coordinated by the nuclei in the brain stem. They include the swallowing, gagging, and retching and vomiting center. You can see from this picture that that belongs to the nucleus ambiguous. So these are by the cranial nerve ninth and the 10th cranial nerve. And these reflexes are created by the ninth and the 10th cranial nerves from the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. So these reflexes, they are registered by the nuclei of the nucleus ambiguous. So upper thoracic ganglia, they are related for the reflexes to the stomach. Now again, the reflexes which are for the sneezing and coughing, they start from the nasal cavity by the cranial nerve fifth sensory fibers from the nasal mucosa and this is going to be registered into the sensory nucleus of the trigeminal which has got the three parts, the mesencephalic and pontine and the uh, this uh, spinal. So nucleus ambiguous again is related with this and also the respiratory centers are also related with this. So this is going to communicate with the respiratory system, with the nucleus ambiguous and the reflexes, they are triggered by the maxillary branch of the trigeminal. They stimulate the center in the brain stem and this reflex arc 
is formed by the 9th, 10th, and the 11th nerves to increase the respiratory, also respiratory center in the uh, brain stem is stimulated by the phrenic nerve and by the motor nerves to the intercostal and the abdominal muscles to increase the reflexes. So reflexes of lacrimation, they start from the lacrimal gland by the irritation of the eye and this is also registered. Then there is the reflex of the jaw jerk and this jaw jerk is from the muscles of the mastication and from the, if you see the temporalis muscle is stimulated by any hit onto the chin and this masseter muscle gives the reflex and the temporalis muscle gives the reflexes via the trigeminal nerve and this trigeminal nerve triggers the motor nucleus of the trigeminal and that gives the reflex arc. So the both deviants, the sensory and the motor of the trigeminal, they are triggered to make the reflex arc in between the sensory and the motor nucleus of the trigeminal that is the mesencephalic part of the sensory and the motor part of the trigeminal so this is the jar jerk or jar reflex so the visual reflexes are the pupillary reflexes light reflexes for the accommodation they are related with the edinger westphal nucleus now the cardinal blink reflex that is when the cornea is touched by something that gave the irritation and this is sensation goes through the branches of the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal and then it is going back and then the seventh cranial nerve which is the facial nerve is responsible for the muscles of the face also give the irritation to the orbiculus oculi and this orbiculus oculi muscle is going to close the eye and this is the corneal blink reflex now reflexes that involve energetic exhalation and the sneezing and coughing also involve recruitment of the cervical and the thoracic spinal neurons we have discussed that the spinal cord is also involved to mediate coordinated contraction of the intercostal and abdominal wall muscles this activity requires so you can see from here that this is the thing that the spinal cord also is involved by contracting the thoracic and the abdominal muscles to increase the airflow from lungs to outside in case of the sneezing. 